Hey everybody, welcome back to Wild Care. It is Wednesday afternoon and so excited to have Melissa, our Ambassador Program Manager here at Wild Care with you. I'm of course Allison, the Communications Director, in case everyone wonders who the disembodied voice is. And Trill, the Western Screech Owl. And Melissa has a very, Melissa and Trill mm -hmm. have a very cool program for us today. What's going on? So what I thought we would talk about is primary feathers because Ooh. it is molting time here. Um, every year birds molt or they drop their feathers and they grow in new feathers so I thought it'd be a good time to talk about a couple of the functions and um, adaptations of the different feathers. Feathers are amazing. They are and they're so specific to each part of their actual body. So Trill here, um, our ambassador of Western Screech Owl, uh, is about six years old came to us in 2014 and she actually has some damage to her brain and also to her wing. We either think she fell out of a tree or maybe she got hit by a car. Um, so she had a lot of uh, damage to her so she can't um, survive in the wild. So that is exactly why we have her today. She has particularly beautiful feathers. I think she the does. plumage on a western screech owl is just so, so gorgeous. And you yeah. think about how effective that is for sheltering up against the bark of an oak tree, for instance. Yeah, their camouflage is absolutely amazing. You can see the difference there between the feathers that are on her back in contrast to the lightness of the feathers on the front, or the contour feathers, Ooh, yeah. those are called contour feathers there. Cool. Um, so yeah, great camouflage. And this is actually one of the feathers, and she actually dropped it so conveniently this morning oh, when we were getting ready job, to Trill. do that. Nice. Um, and what kind is that? Where'd that come from? Um, this is actually a secondary feather. Okay. It's not um, one of the primaries that uh, some of these other feathers are, but these are very important feathers. Uh, and depending on the species, they can have anywhere from uh, up to 12 uh, secondary feathers. Okay. So um, it's actually quite big when it comes out of her. It, it, it looks is really big. Tiny. You look at the size difference yeah. between that feather and the actual owl, and it's sort of surprising that that came yeah. from her. Yeah, I mean, it's almost as, as tall as her. So it is. Oh. it's pretty amazing. Look at that head rotation. That's wow, so she's cool. She's listening to everything. She is. She is. So we mentioned secondaries. You know that we want to talk about the different yeah. types of feathers? Sure, sure. Um, so let's start with the primary. So if we look okay. out over here on our vulture wing, um, they have five primaries on each wing, so 10 total. Okay. Uh, primary feathers are different than uh, secondary feathers and then the cover feathers um, in several ways. One, here's a primary feather. Okay. Okay. And on this primary feather, you're going to notice that there's the calamus, which is the quill. Okay. Okay. This is all made out of keratin, the same thing your fingernails made out of. Okay. Um, and then we go up through here, the spine, right? And there's a notch right here. It's called the notch. Is okay. that in the, sorry, light getting in there? Right there. Okay. Hard actually, to see. this one might actually have a better notch. Maybe we should use this one. There we go. The notch right there. Okay. okay. And off of the notch, these little fibers here, these are just protein fibers, these are barbs. And on the end of the barbs are barbules. So the way to look at it is if the barb is a branch, the barbules are the leaves coming off the branch. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, and what is the point of the barbules? The point of the barbules is they actually have tiny little hooks on it. Uh -huh. And that holds the feather together. Oh. Tiny, tiny little barbules that actually um, zip together or velcro together, so it holds the feather together. So that when you do, when you want to separate them, right, you can kind of go sure. like that, yeah. right, and then you just zip it back up. So those barbules are all interconnecting. I mean, that's got to be a whole lot. There's about 350,000, up to 350,000 barbules per feather. Wow. So. Okay. That's amazing. It is very amazing. Um, you know, the, just the sheer number of anywhere from 7,000 to 25,000 feathers on a bird. Right. Right, and if you times that by three, it's, it's astronomical. That's so cool, okay. So the primary feather is also shaped differently. Okay? This is a secondary. If we put okay. a secondary next to the primary, you're gonna notice that it's pretty even on both sides. Yep, pretty kind of an even. oval shape. Like an oval shape. But if you look at the primaries here, you're gonna know that one side is a little bit um, thinner than the other side, is okay. what I'd say. Okay. And that helps to propel the bird forward. 
That's for forward motion. Oh, does that actually give them lift? Does that um, the secondaries, the whole wing actually helps with the lift. The secondaries help with the airfoil or the lift. Okay. And these are the propelled or the forward motion of that. Okay. okay. And the, the primaries, of course, are the ones at the end of the wing. Yeah, and they can control those independently and they're just like the thinkers. So when they, they need to propel, because it's not just enough to get up off the ground, they got to be able to propel themselves forward. Sure, you have so, to have directional control or it's no use taking to the air. Right, so that's why they oh. are shaped that way. Oh, there we go, <laughs> turn around, there we go. Uh, and they're also really curved. Oh yeah. And so we're looking, whose feather is that that you have in your hands? Uh, this is Vlad's feather, this is a turkey vulture feather. Okay. Right. And what I found out this morning, and I didn't know, that these are actually connected to their bones. So if it's a fairies and two of the tail feathers, it's actually connected to the bone. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. So actually embedded in the bone. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Can you imagine your hair just being attached, every single follicle of hair on your body being attached to your bone? No, but you, you said that's not true of all the feathers, just of those primary just ones. Just of those ones. Interesting. But, oh so my kind gosh. of more like a fingernail or something yeah. maybe yeah. yeah yeah well even no not not at all actually you said attached to the bone anyway yes uh so it would be very painful yes um in fact you know when they're growing out new feathers are called blood feathers if you look at the hollowness of Let's see if we can get the quill and the calamus there oh yeah okay. they are hollow that makes sense when a feather is emerging it's getting all sorts of blood supply nerves everything all through that hollowness right there so as it grows out you know, it, it's developing into this nice new feather. Right. Um, but the problem is, is that if it breaks at that time, it's going to bleed really profusely, but it's also going to be extremely painful for that bird. Oh, to, I bet. Yeah, to that pull makes blood feather. sense. Now, here's interesting between the owl feathers and the vulture feathers here. They're also different in, let's see if, if I can do it with her on me. They're different, um, what am I going to say, tension to that? Okay. Right? Okay, this is really stiff. Yep. Here's a primary feather. Okay. Right. Again, still same notch. Little oh yeah, different, I see right? that. Same right? shape. And what kind of owl are these from? Um, these are from a gray horned. Okay. And you just, it's a little bit more flexible. You see that? Oh, I see that. Yeah. So you also notice, you can see really well in there. They have like little, um, I, I call them the spikes for the kids, but uh, fringe on the sides there. Oh yeah, right. Yeah, down at the, at the end here. Mm -hmm. Sure. So if we take our turkey woods are feathers here, uh -huh. and I hope I think everybody can hear this. It sounds like this. I hope everyone can hear that. And then when we do owls, right, also silent flight. That right? makes sense. So many different. So those that that those spikes, the feathering on the bottom of the feather is what causes allows the silent flight. Yeah, distribution of sound. Yeah, so the way that cool. I always tell um, the kids to remember is if you go like that, you do it really fast, you can hear it, you can feel it. That is your vulture, your falcon, your hawk, your eagle feather. But if you just do a little fringe like that and go like that. Ah, that is your owl feather. Okay. Just like our friend Trill here. Yeah, and that's important for sneaking up on their prey. Yep. And catching their prey. Much more important at night in the dark. Yes. Yep. Yes, because they're hunting uh, mice, uh, squirrels, wood rats, all sorts of uh, different animals. And they, a lot of those animals, like the wood rat, you know, have really good hearing. So yep. they've got to sneak up on their prey there. Sure. Which is also why Sequoia. Our northern spotted owl is actually in captivity because she lost the ability to, to fly silently. She's too loud that for an owl. You don't want to hear your owl coming. That yeah. is true. Sandra says she always wondered about that shape. Yes. And uh, Lily says, as always, we're so well prepared. Great information. Love the feather props. Nicely oh, done, Melissa. Thank you. It. Yeah, we, we wanted to focus on the uh, primary feathers or flight feathers today because the, really there are so many different types of feathers that they have all over their body. It can be a little bit overwhelming. But um, yeah, the primary feathers why they're shaped like that, um, and just the basic parts too. Because when you get down to the tinier feathers, it's kind of hard to point out um, the barbules and everything like that and the, the really intricacies of it. And this is actually one from, I actually, the birds were so gracious. They have been giving me their feathers <laughs> for this demonstration. And these are actually the ones here that are a little bit thinner are from our pelicans. Oh, interesting. I assume that was another Vladimir feather. No, no, this is actually from our pelicans and it's actually also a different tension too. It's really stiff. Oh yeah. Right? And well, this is interesting. Lily more. says, uh, for a bit of history involving owls, did you know Harriet Tubman used owl calls as a signal for the Underground Railroad? Well, that's pretty ingenious. That's very I didn't cool. Know that. Yeah. I, that is a great fact. That is. See, look, everybody's teaching me now. That's it. Right? 
Who's the white feather from? White feather, this is also from um, our pelican. Oh, okay. This is from Marshall, our American white pelican. This is a tiny little covert uh, coverlet feather. Our contour feather. <laughs> oh, I know, look children. at her. She's like, <laughs> times. Yeah, she's pretty. Oh, we might be able to hear her. Okay, let's see, just do that. There oh, we yeah. go. Yeah, you can see her. You can see her feathers, and you yeah. can't hear her at and all. You can't hear her, yeah. definitely. Uh, those little feathers, too, around her face are called bristles. Ah. And then those are the contour feathers, secondary feathers, her primaries, her tails. Tail feathers, they can have up to, um, or they will have 12 feathers. So. Okay. Yeah. And is that consistent across species? Or um, it is, except for when you get to the secondaries. It just depends on the species. So 12 right. in the tail, uh, 10 on the, on the primaries, and then variables on secondaries. Just that to, makes sense. Yeah. Probably the size of the wing. Right, right. Um, feathers are absolutely amazing. You can see why they have to take such good care of them. Um, they have a gland located right back through here. It's called a preening gland. Mm -hmm. um, what they do is when they need to maintain their feathers, because they're constantly doing that, they're constantly making sure that they are in top flight condition. Sure. As they go around to their preening gland, they take off a little bit of oil and then they condition their feathers. Oh, and is it, do all birds have the oil? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I would assume a water bird has more than an owl. Right. And yep. it's also a different consistency too. Yeah, that would make sense. Yeah, yeah. you wouldn't want it would have wouldn't need to be as thick if you didn't have to get wet. Right. Uh, Lily asked if we've ever had a snowy owl admitted, and we have not at Wild Care. That's uh, that I know of. I don't think yeah. not certainly not in my seventeen years. Yeah. Um, um, we don't tend to have them in California. Every mm -hmm. once in a while, you'll have a, an aberrant migrant that comes through, and people will talk about him. But we have not actually had one come into Wild Care. I um, actually had one. Well, I'm from Colorado, and so periodically we get in uh, snowy owls or we see snowy owls and it's usually an explosion in the ptarmigan oh, population that, okay. that has them come down and, and um, expand their territory and cool. everything. So just every now and then, just every few years, you'll see and you'll get one. Now that bird is an Arctic bird, so that does have probably up to 25,000 feathers and that makes sense because it's so cold there. It would need to stay warm. It would need to be very, very warm, which is also really hard for um, an animal like that to be in a warmer climate, also in in a um, ambassador animal right. program because you would spend most of your time trying um, to keep them cool. trying to keep them cool unless you had a special facility like you would for a penguin where it's you know air conditioning and right. x amount of degrees um, because especially now during the summer you know I always talk about um, what are the environmental stresses of animals heat is yeah it's it's really easy for us when these guys get cold or we think they are getting cold it's very easy to warm them up by giving them more food so they can generate their own heat mm -hmm. it's harder for us to cool down the bird that and makes so sense. when a bird gets to a certain point there's not much that we can do for them so we're constantly trying to keep these guys cool we're spraying them down we're giving them ice cubes or we're doing what we can <laughs> so uh, the summer for us is actually a much more stressful time than it would be in the winter and you would think that would be opposite right but um, keeping them warm is so much easier than keeping them cool that right makes sense. And, and a lot of that is because of their feathers right and and they're growing those blood feathers right yeah. so we're always worried about them you know maybe misstepping or running into something or anything like that and breaking a blood feather so this is actually a very stressful time mm -hmm. for us at the uh, the ambassador program and in, in keeping them cool um and pretty uh, you know damage free on the on the feathers there so yeah, yeah. M winter's much easier for us that is, I didn't know, I actually didn't know that. Yeah, I yeah. learned something every time. I love that doing this. Well, Melissa, this has been so interesting. Thank Thanks. you so much. I learned a lot as Thanks. always. I had no idea about the shape of the feather as well. And Trill, you've been a very wonderful assistant. You, <laughs> she's certainly <laughs> interested. She's like, yeah, whatever. Uh, she's certainly interested in some stuff in here today. So we will let her have a rest. Melissa, thank you so much. Everybody will be back on, actually, we're not doing Friday this week because I'm out this Friday. Yes. So this is our only one this week, but we will be back next Wednesday. All right. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a good day. And have a great week. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay well.